Howdy y'all, this is Dwight, and welcome back to part 8 of how I make a basic slip joint pocket knife. Now from the previous video, all I've done is disassembled the pocket knife, and I've decided to go ahead and build the handle on out. Being a basic pocket knife, um, I'm not going to be using any fancy or expensive handle materials. Um, I'm going to be using G10. And I'm going to be using green and black layer G10, and I like eighth inch thick on a pocket knife. Keeps things nice and slim. Um, if you're a beginner, I would recommend using a G10, um, some kind of darker color, not white or ivory or light colored, but a darker, some darker colors. Um, personally, I think this stuff shapes easy, and it finishes out fairly easy. Um, and if you got a darker color, you don't have to worry about keeping it clean like you would white or ivory or something like that. That can be a little bit of a pain. But um, this darker color, like I said, is a lot more forgiving. And whenever you're peening your pins, like the two back handle pins, um, if you over peen them a little bit, um, you don't have to worry near as much about the this stuff cracking or breaking compared to like a wood or bone. Um, now, it might make white marks around the pin if you over it. Um, but it's pretty tough stuff. And in saying it's tough stuff, um, this goes to somebody that, say, works, that's a mechanic, for example. I don't have to worry about if he drops this in a bucket of oil or water or whatever. Um, and he wouldn't either. Because this stuff is fiberglass based. So it ain't going to take on material like natural materials tend to. Especially if they're not stabilized um, so I really enjoy um, using this stuff um, being it's inexpensive uh, a lot of my local folks get knives off of me um, when I use this because I can keep my price point real low I take care of my local folk because well they're the reason why I sell the majority of my knives um, I granted some of them like my fancier ones too and um, and they'll pay for them but not everybody can afford an, a, a safe queen. I'll put it that way. Not everybody can afford a safe queen. Um, see, anyhow. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, it's real simple. All I'm going to do is scribe around my handle. And I'm scribing around the actual handle, not my pattern. Right now, my handle has a 120 grit finish on the edges I haven't did anything um, fancy on the edges yet so I'm not really worried about any scratches um, go ahead and do one right over here Ooh, my lip slip There we go. You can see, scribed around it in both spots. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and I'll show you what we have whenever I'm done with that. Okay, here's a look at what we got. I'm still proud of all my scribe lines. That is just rough cut out with the angle grinder. And next, I'm going to set my liner on here and drill my holes Another pin and do my pivot hole. It's 
that easy. And if you notice, I use pins with tape on it, and I have a pivot bushing super glued on that. That way my pins can't draw, drop through. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Okay, I got all the holes drilled in the handle material. Still haven't shaped them. Leave them like this for now. Up to this point, it didn't matter which way I had them turned because they're black on both sides. Now, I need to make sure I keep the flats opposite. Um, I'm going to be gluing these to my liners, but before I do that, I'm going to be making sure we are flat and it's roughed up. That way it gives the glue something to stick to. Okay, I got my handle material roughed up, made sure they're flat. I went ahead and roughed up the outside of my liner material as well. As you can tell, this one right here it has a nice nasty mark right there. That's going to be a good spot to hold glue. So I made sure that was on the outside during this whole process. Anyhow, I'm going to make sure my parts are clean with acetone. I have a flat surface with painter's tape. I'm going to set one of my handle materials on there and I'm going to put pins in each of the spots. Now I ain't saying this is the best way to go about this. Um, it probably believe would be easier if you glued your liner to the handle material before you drilled the holes. Uh, this is just kind of how I went about doing it. Um, because I will now then put glue on there, slide my liner material down over my pins, get all them lined up, and then I glue it down. Before my glue dries um, all the way, I will then pull my pins out. That way they don't get glued to my handle material. Again, it would probably go easier if I glued my liner to the handle material before <laughs> I drilled my holes. Um, so keep that in mind. This is just kind of how I've done it for <laughs> the last little bit. Um, so once I'm done with this, I will be back. Okay, I got my liners glued to my handle material. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to counterbore a quarter inch hole in my handle material. Uh, that way I can make a bird's eye style pivot. And this is what the counterbore is. I just got this off eBay. Um, and I put a piece of um, pin stock in there to set my depth. That way I can just use my pivot hole here as a guide and it will drill down in there. So, we'll do that real quick. I'm just going to put a scrap piece of G10 down for a base for the stop. And there's my counterboard hole. Okay, now that I have my holes counterboard and my handle material, I'm going to take a chunk of quarter inch stainless steel rod and trim off a couple pieces and super glue them down in my counterboard holes. Okay, I have my quarter inch stainless stock super glued in my countersunk hole. And I've put this on a flat surface to make sure everything's flat. And I'm going to drill through the pivot hole from the back side, using that as a guide, to drill a hole in the center of my bushing. And I got a scrap piece of G10 to set it on. Um, that way I have something soft to drill down into once I punch through this.
I drill my pivot bushing out for a bird's eye style pivot. Now that I have my bird's eye style bushings in, I'm going to flush my handle material up on the inside and the end. And I'm just going to get it close on the spine and the butt end. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, I've got a nice 220 grit finish on the inside and the end. I ever so slightly left the handle material proud of the liner. Not by much, but just ever so slightly. I will flush that down when the knife is fully assembled. Um, that way everything will for sure be even. There will be no guesswork on that. Um, the next step I'm going to do is contour the handle scales, and I'll bring you along and give you a look at how I do that. Okay, we're over here at my belt grinder. I have a mostly worn 36 grit belt on here. Um, that's what I use to do my initial contouring with. And I have you set up fairly close to this, so it might get a little noisy, so be mindful of your ears. Okay, and that is my initial contouring. I will go ahead and go over that with a 220 grit belt. I'll be back when I'm done. This is what we have after I got off the 220 grit belt. I'm now going to take a piece of 180 DA paper and I'm going to round all my edges because I personally ain't a fan of having sharp lines. Um, I like things rounded it makes it more comfortable in the hand in my opinion so I will commence to doing that this is what we got after rounding off all the edges they're nice and smooth filling in the hand. Ain't no sharp edges. So that's a 220 grit belt finish and a 180 grit hand contouring finish on the edges. And that's as far as I'm going to take these until after final assembly. Because um, as I mentioned, for me, these finish out um, fairly nicely. It's not that difficult, I don't think. So this is going to be where we end this video. I do appreciate y'all following along. And until episode 9, y'all take care.